Albert Camus was born on November 7, 1913, on Mondovi, Algeria, which was then a colony of France. He was the second son of Lucien Augusta Camus and Catherine Helene Sentis. His father was a farm laborer, and his mother was a chairwoman, so he spent most of his early years in poverty. His father died when he was ten months old during World War I, and the grief of his mother and the fact that she was deaf and illiterate led her incapable for caring for him. So he was brought up with the help of his grandmother. This is similar to the protagonist of The Stranger, Mersault, who is portrayed to have difficulty connecting to his mother, though he did respect her. Similar to Camus, who did not resent his mother for the lack of her ability to raise him. Louise Germain, Albert Camus' fifth grade teacher, became a large influence in his education as she mentored him to study and read, allowing him to receive scholarships to attend a prep high school. He excelled in both academics and sports as he was the goalkeeper for his football team. This sadly ended after he was diagnosed with tuberculosis at the age of 17. At 21, Camus married Simone Hay, the daughter of a wealthy ophthalmologist, but their marriage was cut short only after two years. Later, he remarried a woman named Francine Fior, whom he had twins with, named Catherine and Jane. In 1957, Camus was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature mainly because of his essay, Reflections on the Guillotine, which argued against capital punishment. This relates to the stranger as Mersault was executed through the use of the guillotine. January 4, 1960, Albert Camus and his publisher and friend, Michael Gilmard, was in, was in an automobile accident on their way to Paris, killing them both. The roots of Camus' philosophy stem from his impoverished childhood. In some of his earliest works and essays, Camus reflects on the beauty of nature in his native land which to him was a wealth owned by all men, even the poor. In those early essays, Camus was already exploring the fragility of man's existence as it contrasted with nature's enduring power and beauty, something that would have resonated with his origins of poverty. This is a theme that appears in The Stranger also. Mersault's physical environment is constantly influencing his mental and emotional state, showing just how much power nature has over man. Religion and the reigning philosophies of Mersault's society, by comparison, have very little power to influence his mental and emotional condition. Even in the end, the very fact that Mersault recognizes the indifference of a universe that will endure long beyond his minuscule existence echoes the ideas that were taking root in Camus at a young age. His years of schooling struggles with tuberculosis and his relationships with a couple influential teachers likely furthered these views, especially his interest in the fear with which all humans face death. Indeed, this is a theme that Camus spent much of his life exploring. While he sought to show others a way of overcoming the fear of death, he too struggled to overcome it. This struggle is present in The Stranger. Camus writes, when such thoughts crossed my mind, I remembered a story my mother used to tell me about my father. I, set, I never set eyes on him. Perhaps the only things I really knew about him were that mother had told me. One of these was that he'd gone to see a, murdered, a murderer executed. The mere thought of it turned his stomach. But he'd seen it through and, on coming home, was violently sick. At this time, I found my father's conduct rather disgusting. But now I understood. It was so natural. How had I failed to recognize that nothing was more important than an execution? That, viewed from one angle, it's the only thing that can genuinely interest a man? The knowledge that death comes to all is something that is a driving factor behind countless religions and philo philosophical ideas. Mersault recognizes this in this passage, noting that nothing is more important than an execution. This reflects the idea that death drives our beliefs, and in the end, one must accept death and overcome it. Camus suggests that embracing the absurd allows one to do just that, seen in the way Mersault finds happiness even as his execution approaches. Other events in Camus' life would build upon this foundation. By the end of World War II, many people began questioning God and religion. While Camus also questioned such things, unlike many people who lost a sense of meaning in their life, Camus set out in an attempt to overcome 
this nihilistic philosophy. As his first novel, The Stranger was an acknowledgement of the absurd nature of the universe. Indeed, The Stranger is seen by some as his one and only nihilistic work. For those of you who don't know, nihilism is the complete rejection of religious and moral principles and the belief that life holds no meaning. Absurdism is the idea that human beings exist in a purposeless, chaotic universe. However, Camus opposed the idea of committing philosophical suicide, what he believed was the end product of, of a nihilistic mindset. After writing The Stranger and his essay, The Myth of Sisyphus, Camus moved beyond more mere absurdism to more existentialist and humanist ideas, which though they rejected religious philosophies, place focus on the individual and creating one's own meaning. Such views are hinted at in The Stranger. Mersal arguably finds solace in the absurd at the end of the novel, concluding that he had been happy and was happy still. However, Mersal's indifferent approach to the world was at odds with Camus' philosophies. He rejected existentialism for the very fact that existentialism rejects all moral restraints in favor of defining one's own meaning. In this sense, Camus was more a humanist than anything else, though he struggled for most of his life to reconcile his views of the absurd with his belief in the need for human morality. Camus studied at the University of Algiers where he met Jean Grenier, a professor of philosophy. Under Grenier's mentorship, Camus studied Greek and Roman classics, as well as some more modern works. Grenier's influence shaped Camus' views of indifference and his writing styles of ambiguity, irony, and skepticism. All of these are present in Camus' work of The Stranger. Camus lived in Algeria during the time of World War II, which made Algeria a place of relative peace to him. The war caused people around Camus to question their beliefs, and many of them concluded that human existence was meaningless. Camus did not develop this view possibly because he wrote about the events of the war in the newspaper, Combat. This taught him to observe without bias and helped to develop his absurdist views. At the time, Algeria was also controlled by France. This created tension and division between the superior white-skinned French and the generally worse-off native Arabs. Camus incorporates this tension that he experienced through Ray Raymond's feud with the Arab and a complete lack of communication on both sides, suggesting that each side feels that the other is almost a different species completely. France's superiority as a colonizing power can also be seen in how Merzalt's boss and Mary both believe that the opportunity to go to Paris is the dream of a lifetime. Some of the most famous works of Camus included The Myth of Sisyphus, an essay about existentialist theory, his novels The Stranger and the Plague, as well as Le Malentendu, a play with a plot mentioned in The Stranger through a newspaper article Mersault finds in his cell.